Welcome to the lesson for building a new project using SegWi files in Flatirons Refraction Statics program. This will be the starting dialog. This dialog here allows you to, number one, change the working directory. In this case, you can see I have my own little directory here under, and I'm going to, uh, I have another one called Canon Home underneath Chuck Diggins, and the, um, and I'm going to create all my projects will be directories. Each project I build will be a directory underneath Canon Home. We have several operations here. The operation that we want, as, the, as you can see by the naming, is create a new project based on SegWi files. First, we have to name the project. I'll call it uh, Demo 1. The data set that I'm going to be building from is 3D, and it happens to be in feet. So next slide, or next uh, page. This is a, a wizard we're on, so if at any point you want to go back, you can just go previous. If you wanted to change the name, for example, say oh, I wanted to change that to be Demo Chuck, I could do that. Okay, now on this page here, we have uh, a few options that are very useful, and we highly recommend using both of them. One is to create a, a um, compressed seismic file. We have a compression algorithm that will compress this data, the size of the data by a factor of about three. It's actually more than that most of the time, four or five even. And um, this file compression, um, the program will actually start, will use this when you come in. So the, the, the original SegWi file will become expendable from the program's point of view at, the, at that point. You will, it will not access that file. If you do not create a compressed uh, file, it will use that SegWi that we're building from here. Uh, but in this case, uh, since I'm going to create a new one, a compressed one, it will, just, uh, will not use the, the data that we build the project from. Uh, maximum output time, 2,000. Uh, these data happen to be 1,200 milliseconds, so 2,000 milliseconds is um, too long, but the program will not pad out the traces. So 2,000 is fine. Uh, this, this is uh, more useful when you want to actually cut back on the size of the data. So if you had 8 milliseconds of data, sometimes we find our customers sending us 8 milliseconds, I mean 8 seconds of data, way too much, and we only need the top 2 seconds. Uh, this is where you would cut that back. Also, we have a um, handy-dandy little resample thing here. It's a two-to-one resampling. Uh, we're going to make this more flexible where you can say a one, if you brought in one millisecond, you could maybe convert it to eight milliseconds and get eight-to-one compression or eight-to-one uh, reduction in size that way also. Uh, these compressed files actually work faster than the originals. We, our program happens to be more efficient at accessing the compressed data. So again, highly recommend it. This data set's pretty small, so you really wouldn't notice any difference, but on larger, the larger the data set, the more useful this is. Now the second option is create CMP gathers. The, uh, you want to do this also. This is useful several places in the program. I'll be showing you in further lessons when these come into play. But um, this is a, a small 3D, so I want to, by using 2,000 midpoint spacing, I'm going to have a, a square grid. Every 2,000 feet on a square grid, I'm going to pull a CMP out of traces. The program is going to create another SegY um, that's invisible to you that it will use. And uh, this gets used in branch assignment and some other places, but it just speeds things up immensely. Uh, there's a little bit of cost up front in terms of time when it's building the project because it's creating the sparse CMP files at the same time. But uh, it, they're used many times in the program and they pay for themselves very quickly. So do that. Uh, and keep in mind this is in feet. This diameter is 4, 400 feet here. Uh, if this was meters, I would make that 100. So, uh, But you can change this at any time in the program. There is an option in the program so you're not stuck with what you get here. You, if you, uh, you don't have to rebuild the project, in other words, to get a different spacing on your CMP gathers. Now, I'm going to add files. I have one SegY, but if I had several, I would add them here. They don't even have to be in the same directory. They can be all over the place. Uh, if you do compression, of course, um, those files will not get used after this, so you can do whatever you want with them. You can throw them away or whatever. 
now we have to have some way of knowing what's where in the headers. Where are the, where is the geometry mapped in the headers? Now I'm going to create a new dictionary. And to create a new dictionary, I click over here on this. And you'll see when you put your mouse over, it says new dictionary. And I'm going to name this demo Chuck. And save that. And then here is the default mapping. Now, in this case, I happen to know where my, uh, my information is stored and it's not stored in these locations here. The, so I'm going to change several of these uh, offsets. At this point, I, I expect that you know where your, your values are mapped. Either the FC Dick header will tell you or if the FC Dick header is wrong, which it often is, we have another facility for actually exploring the mapping and coming up with something outside of the outside of this program is it's a segway viewer and dictionary editor uh, program that was one of the options on that first startup slide and that itself deserves another core another lesson it's a um, it's got a lots of options there and it's very powerful and it's useful for other things too so anyway uh, so at this point I'm going to change my receiver line number and my receiver line number is at uh, 213. So I just click 213, type in 213, and I push return or enter. PC would be enter um, on, the, on the Mac, it's, uh, which I'm doing or on an iMac. It's uh, return. And then this one here is 217. And you can see here, uh, this uh, line number is actually dividing by a factor of 1,000. This is a six-digit number, but the first three numbers are the ones that I want as my receiver line number. So that's why I have this divide by factor. And that happens to be one of our defaults. But um, just keep, out, keep an eye out for that. And then um, the line number here uh, is not in 181, but instead is at location, uh, for the shot is at location 201. Again, push enter. And then 205 here, push enter. Okay, so I finish, and hopefully this is correct. We'll see in a second here how the program likes it. As you can see, it's reading through. It's finding the shots and receivers unique. Uh, it's reading through the number of traces, and the, the important thing at this point is we have no conflicts. Now, um, if we had, if you were reading in a million traces and you found like one receiver conflict, that's probably not a problem. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so now the program's uh, digesting all that information and it brings up this as your starting window. So as the, at the last part of this lesson, I'm going to just kind of explain this window for you. This window, I'm not going to explain everything, but it's, as you can see, I can do things like I can uh, plot elevations here. I can change the symbol size and the symbol type and all that. It doesn't really matter. Um, I can... Uh, uh, the mouse mode is select shot. So if I click here, I actually see the relational information. I actually see the mapping of each shot into the receivers, into its receivers for each of its traces. Now I have another mode here, which is select receiver, which is handy. Um, then a third option is select midpoints. So this is a way of confirming that your geometry makes sense, that what you read, even though it said there's no conflicts, that doesn't necessarily, the, the fact that there's no conflicts doesn't mean that the program read everything correctly. This helps a lot to confirm or to make me feel good about the way the program loaded my data. And then I have a, another option here, which is called select shot on mouse movement. And this is more a continuous way. And I actually like this. I prefer, I'd like to do this, not only because it's cool, but it's, um, it's kind of like a real-time confirmation of the relational information in my project. So I'm going to conclude this project, this lesson at this point, and uh, we'll get into other things like the um, confirming rest of the geometry, pick windows, and then uh, the, the analysis and modeling and statics and, and further lessons. Thank you very much.